the blessings will be always with us and uh, because knowledge is very important and uh, knowledge and wisdom is very very crucial part uh, when uh, we were students okay so let me share the screen so let me know after the, i will share my screen to all of you we are doing puja sir but we are not getting we are not getting any knowledge again no, again one second we are doing puja sir lot of pujas but we are not we are not gaining any knowledge knowledge <laughs> that you need you can need to acquire right uh, that it's only possible when you have to self acquire the knowledge by yourself one thing is that something uh, some uh, like some teacher or uh, guru will teach you and another thing is that you have to inculcate by yourself okay that is very important <laughs> So uh, just to confirm from my side uh, that uh, whether my slide is visible to everyone, right? Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay. So just to uh, have a uh, uh, just to know, uh, to, so that it will be common to all the sections and to get to know about the things uh, which we now going to uh, discuss is actually transistor load line analysis. Okay. So because uh, uh, transistor load line is uh, is very important. Uh, Uh, you can say important point or content in that uh, in the in the transistor circuit because before going to biasing we need to understand what actually transistor load line so what happens is that uh, when we uh, when we when we up, uh, want to work uh, transistor to be operated in a proper uh, region we need to under uh, need to know what actually its uh, q point which you call it Which you call operating point or quotient point. Okay, so then the little Q point is located on the load line. So, but before that, you need to uh, draw the load line uh, so that you can get to know what actually where is the Q point is located. So, take into consideration if you can see here, this is a NPN transistor. Okay, NPN transistor. If you can see here, and this is the, the input voltage VBE, and this is the uh, output voltage VCE. okay and uh, <clears throat> this is in ce configuration that means our input current is base current and output is the collector current and this is the uh, load resistance across the collector circuit and this is the input resistance across the base circuit this is the biasing uh, this is the uh, biasing for uh, output circuit vcc this is generally uh, uh, done at the collector side okay and vbb uh, it is in the input side okay let's say i i'm giving uh, let's say in the mid term exam if i will give some uh, like uh, supply voltage vbb you should know that vbb is the input voltage to the uh, to the collector uh, sorry emitter base voltage you should know this one okay and if i am writing in the question vcc you should know that this is the biasing voltage to the collector circuit okay so you please uh, note this one So, if you sir, apply, yes, sir, please mute that. Uh, what about Madhav Krishna sir? Which one? Some guy has yes. unmuted. Sir. Please mute him. Sir. Yeah, all the students, please uh, mute your mic. Okay, uh, unless until uh, if there will be any questions at that time, you just uh, only uh, uh, you can ask. But at that time, you have to mute. Okay. <clears throat> so if you can apply kvl to the collector circuit here if you apply kvl to the collector circuit what will be it will be it will be vce is equal to vcc minus icrc okay now there are two terminity condition we have to apply here okay so two operating conditions maybe i can explain it here so what we have seen here okay to make you understand well so i am using two things okay one is powerpoint presentation and one is in the in my pad and which i am writing so that it can be helpful to you to understand okay so what is actually our vce is equal to vcc minus icrc okay now there are two conditions are apply so one is case one in case one what we can do when we uh, make vce is equal to 
okay now if vc is equal to 0 then if you put this vc is equal to 0 in uh, let's say this is equation 1 so what will happen so it is 0 is equal to vcc minus icrc right so what we'll get ic ic is equal to vcc by rc correct so this is one terminating condition case 2 let's see <clears throat> when our collector current is equal to 0 now when collector current is equal to 0 if you put this in the equation 1 so what will be then vce is equal to vcc you got my point now why i am choosing collect ic and vce because this is in in npn transistor in ce mode in a ce mode you know right in the output characteristics our vce and ic is the output characteristic voltage and current so we need to know what actually the maximum uh, collector current and maximum collector emitter voltage okay so in order to know what actually the maximum collector current or the maximum collector emitter voltage we have to put this terminating condition so not this one this is ic is equal to vcc by rc and vc is equal to vc so this is the maximum collector current and this is the maximum collector emitter voltage right okay so let's go to the uh, presentation side so that i have uh, written here okay if you can see so there are two points which you can see okay so vcc by rc which i have just now explained this is the maximum collector current and this vcc is the maximum <coughs> collector emitter voltage okay now this point this is one point let's say a and this is one point b if you can join this two point then we got one line and this line is called load line okay <clears throat> now any point which is situated at this load line is called the q point okay now the q point is somewhere here it is the middle of this load line this is also one q point here okay this is one also you can say this is also terminating q point one here this is also one q point here okay so like this one so uh, this q point uh, this uh, if you put uh, if you take into consideration of vcc and vcc by rc that we call it zero signal values of collector or vce are known as operating point or qc or q point okay so in the ib in the outputs characteristics as you know our collector emitter is the output voltage and collector current is the output current so this is the load line and this is vcc by rc this is the maximum collector current and this is the maximum collector emitter voltage now this two point which we have uh, find out if we can join this point so that we call it load line now any point which is located at this load line are called q point now what is the importance of q point why it is so important we'll discuss in this session today okay so applying kbl to the input circuit the just for the reference here so if this is for the output circuit vc we just discussed that vc is equal to vcc minus icrc but similarly for the input circuit our uh, vbb is equal to vbb vbe plus ibrb okay this is cable to the input circuit okay this will this will come later on <coughs> now it's very important to understand what actually the thermal runway concept is taken into place in the transistor you know uh, in the uh, transistor circuit uh, uh, your collector region is um, made wider compared to the base and emitter region the region behind why the collector region is made wider compared to emitter and base because of the issues of thermal runway which is generally encountered in the transistor so what is that we'll discuss now let's say the come in the common emitter circuit the I, let's say ib the input current okay and ic the output current so but we know that our emitter current is a summation of base current and collector current but collector current also we know that 
it is a fraction of the emitter current plus icbo that is the leakage current at the collector base junction so from 2 we get ic is equal to alpha ie plus icbo <coughs> so alpha ie is nothing but ib plus ic that is summation of base current and collector current plus icbo okay so from that if you can rearrange it will be ic 1 minus alpha alpha ib plus icbo and ic is equal to alpha 1 minus alpha ib plus 1 divided by 1 minus alpha into icbo okay now this i 1 divided by 1 minus alpha icbo we denote it as i iceo okay this is at the collector emitter side <coughs> Okay, the leakage current at the collector emitter side. Okay, now if you substitute this value here, so what we'll get now alpha divided by 1 minus alpha, as you know, beta, which we have already discussed in the previous class, and uh, 1 divided by 1 minus alpha uh, in terms of beta, it will be beta plus 1. Okay, anyway, uh, this 1 divided by 1 minus alpha uh, ICBO we called ICEO. So finally, we got it. IC is equal to beta IB plus ICEO. Okay. Now there are three variables in the collector current equation, right? If you can see here, there are three components. Uh, sir, uh, yes. That ICBO is reverse saturation current, no, sir? Yes, in the collector based current, in the reverse, reverse current, yes. Oh, okay, okay. So there are three variables are in the collector current equation. One is beta, IB and ICO, right? Beta, IB and ICO. And very important thing is that this th all three parameters are is very, very dependent on temperature. Okay. Beta value somewhere uh, 50 to 500, somewhere values. But this leakage current no, is very crucial. This is basically... Uh, generally it doubles in every 10 degree rise in temperature if there will be some uh, current flow in the <coughs> in the collector current flows in the circuit and in, let's say in the collector base junction there will be current flows because of current flow there may be some temperature rise in temp temperature rise. now if the temperature will rise so this collector leakage current which we call it ICO that doubles in 10 degree rise in temperature now if collector current will increase collector leakage current will increase now that will affect the collector current here so that means in turn if the collector leakage current will increase then collector current will increase now if the collector current will increase that will increase the temperature at the collector base junction as a result of which the collector leakage current as is dependent on temperature our collector leakage current again will increase now if the collector leakage current will increase then they again will affect the collector current again the collector current will increase so this process will be a cumulative process okay so so it may show that that will uh, make the transistor to be destroyed by itself okay which we don't want actually <coughs> maybe <coughs> i can write it here so our IC is equal to IC is equal to beta IB plus ICEO. Okay. This three term terminology ICEO, beta, and IB all are actually dependent on temperature. IB is not that uh, uh, dependent on temperature. <coughs> beta also dependent, but most uh, is dependent on temperature is this one. So every 10 degree rise in temperature uh, it will actually uh, temperature is actually doubles actually okay so the, the collector current will increase so what will happen if the this term is increases so that will affect the collector current and as beta times at this beta time beta can be 50 or 100 so that will increases so collector current will increase if the collector current will increase then what will happen the collect whatever the collector current is flowing is the collector base junctions so that will create some heat and because of heat there will be temperature rise if there will be temperature rise this term again will increase and this will increase then collector current again will increase so this process will be a cumulative process and as a result of which the transistor may be get destroyed now this process which we call we call it thermal runway
Okay. So, which is very undesirable thing, which we don't want in transistor application. I have one small door. Yes. ICEO is reverse current or reverse saturation current? Yeah, reverse saturation current. Okay. okay. So, so what will happen? That is why, if you can see here, in the most of the uh, transistor circuit, if you can see this one, uh, our which I already somebody joining from outside. Okay, no. Okay, so this is uh, <clears throat> let's say I'm taking about N P N, and this you know this is the meter. This is base, and this is collector, right? So if you can see here, the collector region is made wider. Now why? If you can, as you can see, in this collector base junction, because of this the increase in the collector leakage current, which we have just seen. So if there will be more heat, so that will affect this junction, that the transistor may get destroyed itself. So if we can make the collector region wider, so that will help to dissipate the heat. That is why. <laughs> the collector region is made intentionally wider in order to avoid thermal runway. Okay, so that is the main reason why the collector region is make is made wider. Okay, so you please note this one. So it is very important concept. Okay, so that is why if you can see in between here, the collector is normally made larger in size than the emitter in order to help dissipate the heat developed at the collector junction okay however generally if, if the circuit is designed such that the base current ib is to make decrease automatically with the rise in temperature then the decrease in beta ib will compensate for the increase in one plus beta ico keeping ic almost constant okay so basically this input uh, which the objective is to uh, to tell you about the concept of thermal runway because this is one of the issues um, is in the transistor applications so that is why the architecture of the transistor to be made very precisely in terms of the dimension that means the collector region has to be make made to be made wider so that if there will be any case the collector current will increase so uh, that might uh, increase the heat or temp uh, heat increase in heat so that will not good so you need to dissipate the heat the collector region to be made wider okay <clears throat> now next we will go to the stability factor now what is mean by stability factor is nothing but the rate of change of collector current with respect to collector leakage current okay at constant ib and beta okay at constant ib and base current and beta so this is the uh, the the what you can say the definition or the relation of stability factor so what is stability factor rate of change of collector current with respect to collector leakage current because why we can see here the collector current is greatly dependent upon uh, ico if you can see here which we said uh, in the Sir, this ICU is um, ICEO. Yes, ICEO, right? Okay. Uh, the which you can see here, right? This one, right? Yes, sir. This one, right? Huh? This one we call it. Okay. This ICEO. Uh, 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 no, so that is reverse saturation current. That is ICBO. I was having uh, trouble in this equation. That yeah. is a different equation. Yeah, this is actually. Uh, let me tell you once again. So this is actually ICEO is basically this one actually. Uh, this is two types of leakage current. One is at the collector base side, which we call it ICBO, and this is at ICEO. This is at the which we at the collect uh, which we. Uh, collector current to be uh, what you can it is when the base circuit is open the collector current will be at the current to emitter now this is abbreviated at ICO now which we denoted here this uh, IC is equal to beta IB plus beta 1 plus ICO is nothing but this equation okay CO one, CBO, sir. this ICBO yes yes so this ICBO and ICO denote the same okay okay sir 
so if you can differentiate the collector current here so we'll get uh, this is the, uh, if you differentiate this equation by ic then it will be 1 then it will be the dib by dic beta plus 1 dico by dic now dico dic by dico is what a stability filter x s right so it will be beta plus 1 divided by s okay so if you can rearrange this one so finally we get this relation okay the question may be asked may be asked in the midterm exam what actually stability factor and how you can derive so you have to derive like this okay <clears throat> when uh, remember that when any derivation you are making make sure that uh, you write each and every term its abbreviations okay let's say you are writing uh, this uh, beta okay what is beta you should write amplification factor okay it's not in light you are just writing beta but um, uh, don't uh, didn't abbreviate it so that is not at all the way of writing okay so whenever you write any terminology or any uh, symbol you should abbreviate it in your answer sheet okay so this is my suggestion to all of you whenever you write you please write okay and whenever you write something uh, write in a very technical way not in that you are writing in a like social media, WhatsApp, Facebook type. No, you have to write very precise uh, engineering uh, uh, way of writing the, uh, whenever you write any conceptual thing, write in a very precise way, okay, with proper English. So that is important, okay. So this is my suggestion to you uh, for the coming midterm exam, okay. Okay, then uh, we'll go to the transistor biasing. <coughs> So that four types of biasings are there, base resistor method, emitter bias method, biasing with collector feedback resistor and voltage divider bias. Okay, so we'll go one by one. Okay, this session, you please note down very carefully. Okay, so please pay attention. Now, as you know that sir? bipolar, yes. Sir, you will share the PPT, right? Uh, uh, can you, once again? Sir, you will share this PPT, right? Yeah, yeah, I will share the PPT to all okay, of you. Sir. Okay, but still, you please pay the attention because many things are there. Maybe I have not written in the PPT, so that uh, you need to pay attention, okay? Because in the okay, PPT, only small, because very few points I can add, because I cannot write complete things, right? Uh, that I can explain only. Okay. So whatever the, uh, like the whatever I'm uh, like teaching, so that you please pay attention. Okay. Anyway, I will share the PPT to all of you. So that also you can refer. Okay. So as you know, BJT has two uh, means very important application which we call it amplifier right now what do you mean by amplifier basically when we ap apply a time varying signal like this is a one time varying signal right when we apply a time varying signal at the input we'll get a amplified output uh, we'll get an amplified output right so that means our <coughs> signal strength is increased because uh, because the bjt is used as amplifier Okay, <clears throat> now basically thing is that that when we it, it apply a time varying signal at the input, it will amplify the input signal and we get a very uh, amplified version or magnified version at the output. So that is our objective. But thing is that the BJT won't amplify the input signal like this unless until we apply DC power supply. Okay. And be, so when we apply DC power supply only, then only we, the BJT has the ability to apply to amplify the input signal. Okay, so that is why, because the energy supplied by this DC supply is used to amplify the input signal, the process of applying DC voltage source to the BJT is known as biasing. Okay, so this one we'll need to understand well. Okay. In all the case, uh, the our exp, uh, means uh, our uh, uh, illustration, explanation, and uh, for uh, understanding purpose, uh, uh, we need to take this common emitter configuration. 
So as you know that this in common emitter configuration, this is the emit input voltage uh, VBE, output is VCC. This is supply voltage at the collector side VCC. And this is the load resistance at the collector side. This is the input resistance at the base side. This is the input bias to the, to the input circuit VBB. Okay. So this common terminology uh, we have to understand. Okay. So the basic idea is that this is the input signal. Okay, and because of this uh, common emitter configuration, we'll get the amplified output of the signal. Okay. Now, as you can see here, the operating point. So, what? Why it is so important? No, why it is so important? Now, you see here, my operating point is somewhere in the output characteristic characteristics curve here. Okay, if you can see here, somewhere here. Okay, uh, I'm not drawing the load line here, but it is on the load line, but somewhere the point is here. Uh, that is the our operating point or Q point or question point. Now, what it actually signifies? Now, somebody tell you this is our operating point. So, what it gives you the idea? What it gives the data to you? Now, this gives a very very important data because this operating point tell you what actually at this point what actually the our collector current what actually our output collector emitter voltage and it is operated at what constant value of base current so just like i can say somebody if they i will ask that uh, okay this is my operating point so what that uh, what information we are getting from here so you should tell that yes at this point my collector emitter voltage which is the output voltage of uh, output voltage of NPN transistor in C configuration. So this is my output voltage 5 volt. With respect to the output voltage 5 volt, my output current is 10 milliampere. That is our collector current, and it is operating at the constant value of base current 30 microampere. So that means at this point you could able to know that what actually at this uh, uh, Q point. What is my collector emitter voltage? What is my collector current? And that is what is my base current? So it is very, very important because it tells you about what actually the our output characteristics parameter. And what is the our output characteristics parameter in common emitter configuration, right? Our output is our collector current, output voltage, collector emitter voltage. And you know, right, when the output characteristics is drawn, it is operated at const at different constant value of base current, right? So it will tell you also at that point what actually the base current also. So this is very important. This operating point to to know. But why this operating point is so important in transistor? Because we need this Q point or operating point to be stable. It should not fluctuate. It's then only the transistor can be used as a perfect uh, amplification. How why it is so? Now let's see. Now here my Q point or operating point is somewhere here, right? Uh, just to confirm from my side, my screen is visible to everyone, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay. So just to confirm from my side, okay. Now let's say our my Q point is somewhere here. Now we need to uh, understand here what, whether it's there any advantage or any disadvantage here. Now so if the point is somewhere here, I can say it is disadvantage. Why? <coughs> this is the input volt. This is the voltage we are applying at the input of the transistor. That means which we want to be amplified. Okay. So at the output we get the, okay this uh, this is the amplified output here okay I'm writing here that or later coming here but okay you can able to understand this is our amplified output to the given input signal but we think you see that due to this our this portion is clipped off we don't find this at the output which is very undesirable similarly if our operating point is somewhere here. Okay, now this operating point is somewhere near the uh, near the the maximum value of the collector current because somewhere our uh, we get our maximum collector current right, which we have derived BCC by RC right. So near to the our uh, uh, maximum value of collector current. 
similarly somewhere it is near to the cutoff point here that is so if you can see here if here also the same thing here our whatever the input we are applying we won't get uh, the output because <clears throat> this amount this portion is clipped off so that we don't get the proper uh, magnified output of the input signal with with all the contents uh, to be kept intact at the output that means some portion of the voltage of vc gets clipped up okay <clears throat> okay but see if we put our somewhere at the middle of the our characteristics okay so whatever the input we are getting here input we are giving to the transistor will get the amplified output here now this is very important we need to we need to get the possible i mean we need to get the the exact uh, input waveform at the output in a magnified form right if you can see here this is the waveform which are in the input signal and this is the magnified output of the input signal so we get the proper shape at the output side and there is no distortion no kind of attenuation and the signal is amplified in proper form now this is the proper operating point for a transistor but thing is that the transistor in the transistor operation the operating point may be sometimes fluctuates but for that we need to do something and what is that we need to bias the transistor bias in a such way that our operating point to be kept stable <laughs> now many reasons are there uh, um, that uh, okay we'll get this one okay now why our actually operating point can be can be fluctuate there are many uh, like uh, uh, reasons are there one is as you can see here our collector current is greatly uh, is you know right a collector current is beta times ib right beta is the amplification factor in the common ammeter configuration and ib is the base current but just now we just recently seen our collector current is greatly dependent upon our leakage current collector leakage current and that is also dependent on temperature so this is this is now this, with respect to temperature if the collector leakage current will change or it will get varied then our collector current will change now if the collector current will change then that will affect the our operating point because operating point is nothing but the point we can able to denote what actually the collector current for a proper collector emitter voltage right so if the collector current will change our operating point somewhere it will shift so that is undesirable which we don't want So for this one, we actually do some biasing technology. So first, we'll uh, study about fixed bias configuration. Okay, which is called fixed bias configuration. Uh, why is called fixed bias? The fixed bias with respect to VBB, because this VBB is fixed here. Okay, this is also called fixed bias uh, base register configurations also because it is connected to the uh, to the base resistance here. Okay. And this is the other uh, on the um, the equivalent circuit and the flow of collector and current and emitter current. Okay, and here we take into consideration of the DC analysis here. Okay, now if we take into account what actually uh, this uh, base current here, base current here will be VBB minus VBE divided by RB. Okay, now VBE you know the input voltage and you know right this is nearly account to 0.7 volt for let's say we are taking up to consider some silicon right the knee voltage we generally take into account for pn the pn diode pn junction diode so this is constant that is 0.7 volt and uh, the base current only will uh, get affected by this value of rb only right vb is constant vb is constant so ib only dependent upon rb only if due to some reason rb will somewhere change uh, the our ib current will change okay <clears throat> now ib will change then collector current will change so that will affect our 
that we call the uh, the operating point here okay so let's see how is the uh, thing uh, and how good is the this fixed bias configuration uh, to making uh, the stability of the uh, making to to make the operating point to be stable okay now if in the output side if we can uh, uh, if we can uh, see the uh, equation it will be vcc minus vrc <laughs> the voltage drop across this uh, collector resistance minus vce is equal to 0 from that we can denote uh, vc is equal to vcc minus vrc now this vrc nothing but ic into rc okay so this is ultimately the uh, the uh, the uh, the our uh, different equations uh, that govern uh, our fixed bias configuration or fixed bias base register configurations okay so what is our base current vbb minus vbe divided by rb collector current ic is equal to beta ib and vc is equal to vcc minus icrc okay now if you can see here if you can see here the different uh, operating point i have denoted here why it is so now this base current is greatly dependent upon rb here if there will be slightly uh, changes in the rb then that will affect the base current here and if there will be change in the base current the collector current will also change so something <coughs> so if the base resistance uh, is uh, let's say smaller the our base uh, let's say make it uh, uh, let's say it is uh, uh, decreasing then base current will increase if the base current will increase then in this direction our collector current will increase so that way our this operating point will be shipped upward in the load line if you can see here okay so that is a uh, shifting of the operating point which we don't want okay what uh, here I'm uh, describing what might be the reason the operating point can be shifted. Okay, and here in the fixed bias method, how well uh, it can able to stable the operating point. So that we are discussing here. Similarly, it, this is uh, the different operating point is given for different uh, VCC by RC because your collector uh, uh, if uh, our uh, collector resistance RC if you get is changing if you can see here I am writing here RC 3 is greater than RC 2 greater than RC 1 so we'll get different uh, our uh, our uh, operating point okay similarly for uh, different uh, uh, if the supply voltage VCC uh, is uh, changing uh, at the collector side so that will affect the operating point to shift okay now these are the things that what are the regions are there with the the operating points can be changed okay so how we can able to uh, rectify it that is very important thing so let's first we consider now let's say for uh, let's say our transistor is, uh, for a given transistor our beta is 100 okay and base current is let's say 30 microampere okay now for this one we need to draw what actually uh, our uh, operating point is where it's located so let's consider so you know that from the output characteristic our vce is nothing but vcc minus icrc okay now our beta let's say uh, take into consideration 100 okay it varies from 50 to 200 let's say uh, so so here in this cases i am taking 100 okay actually beta varies from 50 to 500 generally varies so you can somewhere it is 50 100 200 400 and 500 okay but here i am taking uh, three three example one is uh, beta is equal to 100 one is beta is equal to 50 and beta is equal to 200 and we were uh, we will see how the operating point uh, uh, is uh, changing in the output characteristics okay so beta let's say uh, let's take an example beta is equal to 100 now let's take an example our our collector resistance is 1.5 kilo ohm and our collector voltage is 10 volt okay 
and let's say our base current is 30 microampere okay let's say base current is 30 microampere so what we will get ic ic is equal to you know right beta ib so which is nothing but 3, 3 milliampere okay 3 million 3 milliampere and what is collector emitter voltage so if you can put it here vcc is equal to 10 volt ic is equal to 3 milliampere and our collector resistance is 1.5 kilo if you put this value 5.5 volt okay so where is this point this is the point this is the point where our collector emitter voltage is 5.5 volt and our emit collector current is 3 milliampere so we'll put the point here so this is the operating point for this transistor which has beta is equal to 100 and uh, and uh, for this and the for the base current of 30 microampere okay now let's see if we due to some reason uh, our, our maybe uh, we uh, change the transistor now generally if you change the transistor the beta value also will change so let's say for this uh, transistor uh, our beta is equal to 50 okay same thing will take the base current 30 microampere so collector current will be 1.5 million milliampere rc remains the same 1.5 kilo ohm so vc you will get 7.75 volt so for 7.75 volt our <coughs> collector current is 1.5 milliampere so this is the operating point here okay so previously our operating point was here the previous now it, the new operating point is here at this point okay so you see it's a very fluctuating uh, uh, the the very fluctuating uh, this one uh, that means the operating point is uh, is drastically changed okay so much variations okay okay now let's see if we change our uh, beta to 200 okay so same parameters this base current is 30 microampere so and uh, our uh, uh, load is uh, collector resistance is similarly 1.5 kilo so so what will be the collector current here in this case is so it will be 200 into 30 because beta is 200 so ic is equal to 6 milliampere and collector emitter voltage is 1 volt so we'll get somewhere the operating point here <coughs> so if you can see here if the beta value is changing okay so previously our uh, our uh, our operating point was here when we change to oh, 500 the uh, 50 50 our operating point is located somewhere here and when the beta value changed to 200 our operating point is located somewhere here okay so that is very that is very uh, undesirable thing so in the base in the fixed bias uh, base resistor method this is the disadvantage that we could not able to establish the uh, the operating point to be stable okay which is uh, which which is a uh, which is a disadvantage in the uh, the fixed bias method or fixed bias collector bias method okay now in order to avoid this one uh, we need another uh, sir, yes sir why we are neglecting reverse saturation current which one i see equal to beta ib you take no sir in formula yes. Yes, yes. Why, why we are neglecting uh, reverse saturation current, ICO? Yeah. Uh, here I am not taking ICO because there are many factors. Are. Here I am taking the uh, contribution of the beta only. Okay. Uh, we can take uh, uh, the contribution of the leakage current also. So that will affect also because if the leakage current will increase, our collector current will also increase. That I already discussed. Here I am solely uh, discussing about that what is the effect of uh, beta beta here okay okay sir that means we are considering it to be an ideal transistor yes uh, take into consideration of, of uh, let's say if we take into consideration ideal transistor because anyway our collector current is dependent upon beta also dependent upon collector leakage current the whole idea is here the my uh, my point is here that our collector current is very very sensitive that i want to say it is dependent upon beta it depends upon the collector leakage current so anything if will change beta will change here i am discussing about beta okay if you can see here if the beta is changing beta is changing means 
uh, here uh, uh, okay here beta uh, leads to uh, to uh, uh, is confined to a particular transistor let's say uh, one transistor was there and uh, different uh, another i am taking another transistor so beta will definitely will change if the beta will change the collector current will also change accordingly okay but uh, that is if the uh, collector current will change so that will uh, affect our uh, operating point because as we can see here the operating point is shifted in different uh, positions and it is uh, shifting it's in shifting in a very drastic manner somewhere previously it was here afterwards it is here afterwards here so which is not required which is not uh, undesirable in the transistor circuit applications uh, to be operated as a amplifier for amplifier to be used our operating point has to be uh, operated in the proper region somewhere here okay in the middle of the characteristics and another thing is that this operating point has to be stable irrespective of the change in beta or any other variation in the uh, like collector current so in the base register method we have seen that this is not possible this some disadvantage is there so in now we need to find out some means are there should be there like let's say uh, that the operating point if it will be changed but not in a drastic manner if it should change in a very small uh, minute change is also will be there minute variation that is okay but not in a very uh, very uh, like uh, in a large scale it should change okay so that is the point here so we'll discuss that how go, uh, how the voltage divider bias configuration could able to somewhere uh, to stabilize the operating point we'll see here okay in this cases we take uh, some approximation here that here the our base current to be taken to be zero it is the approximation here and voltage divider bias we are taking because there are two resistance are taken and this vcc is accounted for to for voltage biasing okay so if you take at this point node voltage what will the vb here r2 divided by r1 plus r2 into vcc okay okay so this is the equivalent circuit for the voltage divider circuit after this uh, circuit if you can uh, modify it in the equivalent circuit we'll take one thelvin voltage and when we'll call uh, thelvin resistance uh, you will discuss uh, you will uh, uh, study more in the network theory analysis uh, maybe in the second year but for the part being you just uh, you should know that this is the uh, equivalent circuit uh, where uh, this is the thelvin equivalent voltage and this is the thelvin equivalent resistance here okay in this cases uh, voltage divider bias this is you should remember our thelvin resistance should be very very get less than beta plus 1 re if this condition is satisfied then it could able to stabilize the operating point now how it will we'll see in now in this uh, in this session okay now let's take an example here let's say this r1 and r2 are given by uh, 10 kilo ohm 2 kilo ohm and rc is uh, this one uh, is uh, what is can uh, is uh, 3.6 kilo ohm uh, rc is 3.6 kilo ohm and uh, this uh, re re is 1 kilo ohm okay so what is thelvin voltage here it will be r2 divided by r1 plus r2 into vcc okay so we'll get uh, 2 volt and thelvin resistance will be 1.66 kilo ohm okay so just like we take this equivalent circuit in this in this manner uh, in this manner similarly if you draw this equivalent circuit will get it like this okay so this is thelvin thelvin voltage and this is the thelvin resistance now let's think that this beta value is 50 so what will happen if you can see here beta plus 1 re is equal to 51 kilo ohm and thelvin resistance is 1.6 kilo ohm so if you can see here compared to rth this beta plus re is is greater you see it is 1.66 kilo ohm and this is 51 kilo ohm this condition is satisfied rts our thelvin resistance rts should be very very less than beta plus 1 re 
so this condition should be satisfied so whether it is satisfied here in this circuit yes it is satisfied here by this given expression <coughs> compared to 51 kilo ohm 1.66 kilo ohm is very very less okay now let's calculate uh, if we calculate the base current from this circuit what is the base current here it will be vts thelemin voltage minus base emitter voltage vbe divided by rts plus beta plus 1 re okay this is the base current now if you put all this value uh, we get our base current to be uh, 24.6 microampere okay now this is the base current if this is the base current then what is ic now ic is equal to beta ib okay so ic is equal to 50 into ib we just we find out 24.6 microampere so it will be 1.234 milliampere okay and what is vce at the output circuit is nothing but vcc minus ic plus rc plus re okay so if you put all this value here we get vc is equal to 6.32 volt okay so let's draw the load line at the operating point so in the load line this is our uh, the maximum collector emitter voltage that is vce and this is the maximum collector current vcc by rc plus re and this is our operating point here that with against the 6.32 collector emitter voltage our uh, uh, this uh, collector emitter current is 1.234 milliampere okay <clears throat> now let's see our beta maybe uh, let's say change to 100 okay previously it was 50 and let's say 100 now let's see what will happen to the operating point let's see okay now the, our main uh, our main objective should be that irrespective of the change variation of the beta our operating point should not change because that should be the criteria for a proper biasing because then only the transistor can be used as amplifier so let's see if the beta is 100 then where our operating point is located okay so let's see so similarly the same thing here our base current we need to find out first that is vts minus vbe divided by rts plus beta plus 1 re okay so if you can put all the values here so our base current is 12.66 microampere and what is the collector current collector current will be beta times ib what is beta here 100 and 1.266 milliampere i collector current now what is the collector emitter voltage at the output side it will be vcc minus ic plus rc plus re okay <clears throat> so we'll get vc is equal to 6.174 volt okay so let's see what is the new uh, operating point here if you can see here the operating point is somewhere here that means not that much change that means it is slightly change here but not drastically it has changed so this is applicable for transistor to be operated so if you can see here in the voltage divider bias we could able to stabilize uh, uh, quite well uh, to the operating point because our operating point uh, is not changed so appreciably okay and this is only possible when our uh, this condition is satisfied rts is equal to beta plus 1 re basically it is can also taken to be multiplied by 10 times beta plus 1 re so this condition has to be satisfied so very important thing is that when we design the transistor in the common emitter configuration <coughs> if it is used in the voltage divider bias so in order to make the operating point to be constant or stable this condition has to be satisfied so remember this one rts has to be less than beta plus 1 re okay so this one is the uh, something we like to discuss here so okay this basically this is the bias which we, we have just uh, uh, have seen so in the base register or the fixed bias configuration so we know that vcc our is equal to ib rb plus vbe so from that if you calculate ib here uh, it will be vcc uh, minus vbe divided by ib now this equation if you can see is independent of collector current and uh, as you know 
our uh, di dib by dic is equal to 0 so the stability factor is equal to 1 plus beta for the base register base register fixed bias configuration similarly in the emitter feedback bias register if you can uh, uh, apply Kirchhoff voltage law to the base feedback emitter loop if you can see it will be pcc minus ibrb minus vbe minus ie re is equal to 0 okay so but ie we know that ib plus re that is the summation of base current and collector current and uh, if you just rearrange the equation so bringing one side uh, vcc minus vbe ib multiplied by rb plus re plus ic rc ic re okay so again we have to find out base current from this equation so what is the base current vcc minus vbe divided by re rb minus re divided by re plus rb plus ic here VBE is independent of IC. If you can see, it VBE is independent by IC. So DIB by DIC will be minus RE divided by RE plus IB. Okay. So stability factor will be in this cases for emitter feedback bias matter 1 plus beta divided by 1 plus beta RL divided by RE plus RB. Okay. Now this is the stability factor for emitter feedback bias method. Okay. Okay. We'll uh, uh, discuss some uh, actually uh, numerical problems uh, that uh, that uh, to know what actually the uh, the uh, stability factor. Uh, so let's say for the base register bias method, let's say we're taking into consideration. So let's say our uh, collector emitter voltage is eight volt, and collector current is two milliampere. And we are giving, giving uh, 15 volt. Okay, 15 volt. This is supply. Uh, that is, this 15 volt is nothing but our uh, voltage at the supply voltage at the collector side. Okay, that is VCC. Okay. Now for this uh, silicon transistor to beta to be 100, let's say beta to be 100. Now you need to calculate what actually the value of load resistance and the emitter current and the stability factor. So how you can do? Okay. So first we'll see what actually given. So uh, 15 volt DC supply is given. That means uh, our uh, PCC is equal to 15 volt. Okay, beta is equal to 100, and base emitter voltage uh, you know this 0.7 volt. Okay, this is the new voltage uh, that you know, and VC is given 8 volt and IC is 2 milliampere. So what we need to calculate? We need to calculate the load resistance. That means what is the load resistance RC and what is the load resistance RB here? And what is the emitter current and what is the stability factor? So how we can solve this uh, uh, question? So first, let's say we'll uh, go to the output circuit first. So what is VCC then? VCC is nothing but ICRC plus VCE. Okay, VCE is given. VCC is given 15 volt. IC is given 2 milliampere. RC plus VC is given uh, 8 volt. So from that RC can be find out. Okay. So this is 15 by minus 8 divided by 2 ohmpere. So this is the <coughs> our uh, collector resistance RC. And uh, beta you know right IC divided by IB. So what is the base current here? Base current will be IC divided by beta. Okay. So this is 0 0.02 milliampere. Now in the input circuit, if you can uh, rearrange the equation, it will be uh, the supply voltage uh, uh, VCC is equal to uh, IBRB plus VBB. Okay, <clears throat> so this is RB, uh, it will be VCC minus VBE divided by IB. Okay, so it will be uh, some this value RB. So this is the RB value, this is the RB value, and this is the RC value here. Uh, if you calculate collect emitter current, then it is the summation of base current and collector current. Now base current, uh, just we have um, C 2 milliampere, 0.02 milliampere, and collector is 2 milliampere. So this is emitter current. Now base resistor method, as you have just now see, our stability factor is S is equal to beta plus one. So just you have to put the value. <coughs> beta is uh, is given 100, so 101. Okay. So this way. You can able to uh, solve a, a practical versus question 
<coughs> let's say you have given a is a base register bias con, uh, configuration and how and you want to know what actually our stability factor what is the emitter current what is the our uh, load resistance so this we can able to determine okay now let's go to another uh, 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 configuration uh, that we call in the emitter bias uh, silicon transistor circuit and determine the emitter resistance base resistance and load resistance bc and vbb okay so first we need to find out what actually our uh, uh, vcc vcc is given 12 volt beta is given 80 collector current is 3 milliampere vc is given 7.6 volt ve is 2.4 okay so these are all actually given okay we need to find out what is your emitter resistance base resistance uh, this uh, <coughs> what you call it collector resistance okay. collector emitter voltage we need to find out and base voltage we can find. now vb we know right it 0 0.7 point, 0 0.7 volt per silicon transistor now vb can be uh, this base emitter voltage can be denoted as vb minus ve which is equal to 0 0.7 volt now VE is given 2.4 volt, which is given in the question. So VB can be found at 3.1 volt. And what is VCE? VCE is equal to VCC, VC minus VE, which is equal to 5.2 volt. Okay. Okay, so this much for this will we'll study after the midterm exam, that is field effect transistor. Okay. So this is uh, all about uh, for uh, actually uh, uh, today's class. So uh, I hope you could able to understand the thing. And uh, so, uh, okay, let me uh, tell about uh, how, what is the actually uh, this pattern of questions in the midterm exam. So in the midterm exams, uh, it will be again, it will be both uh, numerical basis questions and and uh, the uh, theoretical questions okay so you have to prepare accordingly and uh, i am planning to make let's say somewhere around uh, 60 percent numerical basis question that is application basis question <laughs> and 40 percent will be uh, theoretical questions okay so you have to prepare accordingly and what is the syllabus syllabus will be uh, till what we have studied so far in the today's class. Okay, so it is up to the biasing. Uh, biasing, mostly two biasings you just focus. One is base resistor biasing and voltage divider biasing. Okay, these two biasing you just focus. Okay, and uh, till now, whatever we uh, 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 means uh, solve the numerical problems, whatever we uh, uh, discussed about different application basis questions, you just uh, prepare that well also. And simultaneously, um, there are many uh, this kind of problems or application questions you can find in uh, different uh, books okay uh, different uh, uh, recommended books you can also go through it I've already said the soft copy in the classroom you just go through that one and um, so prepare well accordingly so so any doubt so far before we'll close our session for today's class So which biasings are like you have discussed now? Oh, okay. That four, uh, I think four biasing techniques are there. So among which you can see. Okay, let me share you once again. <clears throat> so my screen is visible to you, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So mostly uh, we'll discuss, uh, you just focus on these two, base resistor biasing, uh, just fi that fixed biasing method, which we just starting, which we studied. Base resistor method and voltage divider bias. Okay, these two uh, techniques, we just proper, uh, study well, okay. Yes, so, thank you. So, so feedback won't be there. Yeah, actually that uh, we can study, but it's not relevant actually. So voltage divider bias is very important because that generally used in the transistor application. And uh, that is uh, that is not, uh, we, we don't take into account in our syllabus.
ओके सर थैंक्स सो सर सिलेबस इज अप टू दीस टू बाइसिंग्स व्हिच यू टू यस अप टू दीस टू बाइसिंग एंड व्हाटएवर वी स्टडीड सो फार लाइक वी स्टडीड मेनी थिंग्स राइट वी स्टडीड अबाउट दिस थर्मल रनवे स्टेबिलिटी फैक्टर uh biasing uh load line uh q point uh and different aspects we have studied right so your study and uh, <coughs> transistor applications uh, now that in transistor how the that gain of the amplifier how the gain of the amplifier is uh, determine how the different uh, current equations okay that also we studied right and we solved some problems and uh, yeah whatever we studied so far uh, up to today that will be the syllabus okay okay sir okay sir attendance yes sure sir um, now uh, yeah we will i will take the attendance uh, before that i want to just if, if any doubts if no doubts are there uh, maybe you can uh, uh, you can write down the roll number in the chat box so that so i can please upload this uh, session as soon as possible on google classroom i'll have to do revision for it yeah yeah sure sure <clears throat> well, i think uh, up to last class i have already uh, yes sir uh, uploaded yes, sir. in the classroom so today's class uh, recorded video also i will share in the classroom as well okay along with uh, i will share the ppt presentation file uh, in the classroom so that uh, it will be helpful for you to prepare for the midterm exam okay okay so please write down your roll number in the chat box and those who have written uh, the roll number in the chat box they can leave the session Yeah thank you thank you, thank you. and all